Globetrotters, and today I want to share with all of you how we discovered that leveraging global startups is the fastest way to transform an underdeveloped tech ecosystem. One of Puerto Rico's best kept secrets is that we have an amazing tech talent pool. We graduate approximately 1,000 computer science majors and engineers every year. However, about 90% of them end up leaving the island in search of higher paying tech jobs and greater opportunities. Of these, nearly 100% of them end up with jobs at big traditional tech firms. Those that do stay end up earning two or three times less than they would in the States. And by and large, they end up with jobs that they're not as happy about in a tech ecosystem that is growing, but still very much nascent, with less access to innovative opportunities and technologies than other major tech hubs in the US. By far, the biggest problem that our tech ecosystem faces is that our best and brightest coders end up at big traditional tech firms, and that as a result, they largely end up disconnected and disengaged from our tech ecosystem. We needed to turn this tech talent brain drain into a brain circulation instead. So we wondered, was there an alternate path that could help guide our next steps in solving this problem? And thankfully, there was. Meet Miguel Rios. Miguel Rios went through the public education system in Puerto Rico and was one of the few graduates from his high school class to go on to graduate from college. He studied computer engineering at the University of Puerto Rico in Mayagüez and then went on to do his master's at the University of Maryland. Throughout his academic career, he was very interested in data science and he looked for opportunities and internships like the one at the National Institute for Standards and Technology in Maryland to hone his skills in this area. Upon graduating from Maryland, he landed an early internship opportunity at Twitter that turned into a complete and full-time employment as one of the first 200 hires at the now publicly traded tech company. He is currently a senior manager and engineer at Twitter, reporting directly to the company's CTO. But why was Miguel so different? And what was so different about his story as compared to other really talented students in Puerto Rico that went on to work at big traditional tech companies? <coughs> well, when Miguel joined Twitter, Twitter was very much a startup, not the publicly traded tech giant that we know today. And with that came an ethos of giving back, of connecting to tech ecosystems, of adding and deriving value from them, of circulating knowledge, opportunities, and innovation. Miguel wasn't a part of our tech talent brain drain, but rather he was part of a new movement of brain circulation that we would help trigger. So we said to ourselves, what if we had one, 10, 20, 100 stories or more like Miguel's? Was it possible for us to transform our tech ecosystem forever? Now, I want you to meet Christian Rodriguez. Like Miguel, Christian went through our public education system and then went on to the University of Puerto Rico to study computer science. He spent his first two years engaged in mathematical research at the university, but in his third year, in his junior year, influenced and coached by some key members of our tech and startup ecosystem, he started becoming really passionate about programming. And that's when we met him. Like many other students studying computer science in Puerto Rico, he was well on track to go work at a big traditional tech firm in the US. So we said to ourselves, was it possible to change the script of Christian's future? 
Could we help him land a job at the next Twitter, receive stock options, generate personal wealth, give back to his ecosystem in much the same way that Miguel had done? Of course, there is only one way to find out. So we launched an experiment. And through our networks, we reached out to an API integration company based out of Denver, Colorado. Mark Green, Cloud Elements CEO, was hungry for talent. But he couldn't compete with big tech dollar for dollar for top talent. So we said to him, don't worry. We'll find high potential students and we'll offer them an, an initial internship opportunity with you, after which you can decide whether or not to hire. Our value proposition was quite simple. We were not just talking about high potential students, but we were talking about students that were diverse, bilingual, culturally compatible, cheaper than recruiting from major tech hubs in the US, and above all, that he could test drive before deciding whether or not he wanted to hire them. There was a catch, though. We said, if we recruit and vet and identify talent for you, then you have to give us something, too. And in exchange, we want you to mentor new and existing startups in our tech ecosystem in the hopes that they, too, would become globally oriented someday and export their products and services to the world. Mark said, let's do it. And in two weeks, we launched a coding challenge and spread the news throughout the entire startup and tech ecosystem and throughout all the university campuses. In that same period of time, we received over 50 submissions. And after screening for those candidates that successfully passed the coding challenge, we then vetted them through a series of technical interviews conducted by the top startup founders and leaders in our ecosystem and the best developers in our diaspora. This, it turned out, was our secret sauce. Recruiting by startup founders and leaders for startup founders and leaders yielded an astonishing 80% placement rate amongst our fellows. As I'm sure you can imagine, Christian became a part of this first experiment. And during his junior year, in the snowy winter of 2014, he traveled to Denver, Colorado, and participated in a company-wide hackathon to push code that was sent to production for new product releases. Christian not only had the opportunity to code meaningfully alongside the company's founders, chief technology officer, and senior developers, gaining invaluable mentoring in the process, but he also witnessed firsthand what it was like to work at a funded startup pushing really hard to become a global player in a nascent industry. What happened when he came back was extraordinary. In many ways, Christian has changed. His outlook was entirely different. He now started talking about working at a startup, about moving to the vibrant tech scene in Silicon Valley, about someday starting his own startup. In the university, his activism changed as well. He became the president of the Computer Science Association at the UPR. And on top of that, he organized workshops and events on campus. He became a leader in our tech ecosystem, <coughs> planning hackathons and game jams, and becoming a Code Trotters evangelist. Cloud Elements, too, was inspired to take action, and thankfully way beyond the initial give back requirement that we had agreed upon. They actually sent one of their founders to Puerto Rico to give live mentoring to existing startups in our tech ecosystem. And they went beyond that. They also did a community event for the entire startup and tech ecosystem where they discussed how to build and leverage a global sales pipeline. In fact, they, they too also sponsored Hack PR and opened up their API data for students to create products and applications on top of it. Christian was hired by Cloud Elements on a remote basis while he finished his degree here in Puerto Rico. And in fact, 
All of the other fellows that have been hired in Code Trotters have also worked remotely, even after graduation, opening up a new and unexpected avenue towards our ecosystem's transformation. Today, bright and talented coders can work from Puerto Rico and can choose to stay here with their families if they want to, while also earning higher than average wages and contributing to our ecosystem. Christian's story could have been very different. He could have been just another one of the high potential students going on to work at a big tech firm, and we could have lost track of him. But instead, he decided to join our experiment and to craft a new path for himself and an even wider trail for others to follow. Code Trotters didn't just help Christian land a high paying remote job at age 20. It also changed his opportunities. It solidified his commitment to the tech and startup community in Puerto Rico, and it changed his future career path. Today, Christian is a developer at Zenefits, a Silicon Valley-based startup growing very rapidly, disrupting the HR and benefits space that recently raised a $500 million Series C round. He is one of the very few employees at Zenefits that was recruited right out of college, and he readily admits that he wouldn't be where he is today had it not been for Code Trotters. But don't just take it from me. Let's hear what Christian had to say about it. My name is Christian Rodriguez and I'm a software engineer at Zenefits. I participated in Code Trotters during the winter of 2014 where I interned at a startup called Cloud Elements in Denver, Colorado. While I was working at Cloud Elements, I had the opportunity to write code side by side with the founder and CTO and other engineers. And I also had the opportunity to push code to production that was used by Cloud Elements customers. After my internship, I also had the opportunity to work for Cloud Elements while I finished school remotely from Puerto Rico. A big component of the Code Trotters Fellowship is that com both companies and fellows have to give back to the startup ecosystem in order to help it grow and help the fellowship program itself uh, attract more students and more startups. Cloud Elements gave back to Puerto Rico by sponsoring our national hackathon, Hack PR. They had the opportunity to be their representative at the hackathon and help by mentoring students in behalf of Cloud Elements and give sponsor API prizes in behalf of Cloud Elements. And I also gave back to the community by helping interview future students for Code Charters Fellowships during summer of 2014 and summer of 2015. The Code Charters Fellowship really helped shape my perspective in terms of what I wanted to do after finishing school. It helped me find the difference between big tech and a start. In big tech, you don't get the opportunity to work side by side with the CTO. You don't get the opportunity to work side by side with a lot of the senior developers and learn from them and push code to production that's actually used by customers. That experience helped me realize that after school, what I wanted to work at was a startup, and that's how I found Zenefits. Now that I'm in San Francisco working at Zenefits, I still go back to Puerto Rico and I still give back to the startup ecosystem because I learned through Code Trotters that giving back and helping other students and helping other developers is the only way that I can make sure that the startup ecosystem and the Puerto Rico entrepreneurial community keeps growing and achieves the greatness that I know it will. In just one year, we were able to replicate Miguel's story. But above all, we triggered a now unstoppable transformation of our tech and startup ecosystem. Christian has become an example for others to follow, inspiring our youth to pursue careers in tech, to join Code Trotters, to give back to their ecosystem, and to one day aspire to create their own companies. Global startups have reached out to us and have asked us to join the program. We've sent our Code Trotter fellows beyond the US to Europe as well. We even recently launched a coding academy and an accelerator to help fuel our tech ecosystem and contribute to an entrepreneurial revolution capable of restoring economic growth to our island. This is what leveraging global startups helped us do in our ecosystem. 
and we believe that it is an idea worth spreading. Thank you.